here. He is arisen and he is alive. So the blood still works. The blood still has miraculous power. We're not singing these songs in vain. We're not reading these scriptures in vain. It's all true. We believe by faith and it's also by fact that Christ is risen. Christ is here. And for that, we should shout hallelujah. I don't need a piano or a keyboard to just say thank you, God. We can just say praise you, Lord, for just getting up from the grave because he could have stayed in the tomb. We could have been studying bones. We could have been studying fossils. But he decided to get up, talk and walk with people on his way where he ascended to heaven. Amen? Amen. What a God and a mighty, powerful God we serve. Hallelujah. So we know that at the cross, at the cross, that's where we first saw the light of Jesus. Come on, put those hands.
Hallelujah. And we say that Jesus, I, one thing I, one of the things that I love about this season is that we've been focusing on how unbeautiful Calvary was. You talked about goriness of it all, and we always want to get to how God came back again for us because we really don't want to think about what he did on that cross for us because it's hard to think about a crown of thorns is not a crown. It's a crown that was dug into his, into his skull. The, 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 the piercing in the side to make sure that he was dead so that the blood and the vinegar could come out of his body. That was just, they, they stabbed him in his side. They didn't pierce his side. They stabbed him in his side. But again, he got up and I thank God for that. And that's enough to just shout all over this building. <clears throat> so we said, Me near the cross, there's a precious fountain, and it's free to.
The good news is that we should not look for the living amongst the dead. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and let us pray in unison. God, we rejoice in Jesus' resurrection. When we have questions, may we remember all that Jesus has said and go to the places that he told us to go to. We know that you keep every promise in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. And amen, and good morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Our hymn of praise can be found in your hymnals on page number 99. Christ the Lord is risen today.
Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. At this time, we will have Deacon Marlene Christian to come forward to lead us in reading of our morning scripture, followed by Deacon Crystal Buxton, who will lead us to the throne of grace. Amen. For this Resurrection Sunday, the scripture is taken from Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, 4 through the 12th verses from the New International Version in our bulletin and online, please. <clears throat> Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had <clears throat> done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thanks be to God that he lives, that he lives and we can face tomorrow. Come on, because he lives. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our sins and transgressions, precious Heavenly Father. Let us not be overcome by our enemies, in Jesus' name. Lord, we bless you and we praise you for another Sunday morning in fellowship, Lord. We thank you for uniting us here at Bethany for this Resurrection Sunday, Lord. We thank you for your blessing upon our pastor and his family. Continue to encourage him, Father, to strengthen him, to guide him, and to protect him, Father. We thank you for our ministers, our officers, all the family and friends that are here, Lord, all who are joining us at the, on the live stream, blessed Heavenly Father. I thank and praise you, Father, for this day, Lord. We thank you for what it represents, that it unites us back with our Father, Lord. 
we thank you that Jesus bore our sins. He, he conquered sin and death, Father, so that we may embrace his grace, Father. For those who embrace his grace, may we also embrace his love. May we embrace joy. May we embrace happiness, blessed Heavenly Father. May we embrace patience. May we embrace compassion, Lord. May we embrace love and kindness. May we embrace peace, Father. We thank you and we, we praise you for gentleness, for goodness, Father. We thank you for all of this that you have granted to us as we receive your love, Lord. We just thank you and we bless you for this is wonderful and it is your doing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, he lives. Yes. 
day of his appearing will surely come at last. Oh, yes. Yes, he lives. Oh, Christ Jesus. Oh, he walks and he talks all along. Yes, yes he lives. You know he lives today. That's a good place for an amen. He lives today. And because he lives, I live a great life, a better life, the best life. Because he lives, I can live. If you are worshiping with us today for the first time or returning for a second or third, we ask that you'll stand that we might acknowledge your presence. Anyone worshiping with us for the first time, God bless you, my sister. God bless you. That's it. Everyone else is at home. God bless you, my sister, as well. God bless you. Amen, amen. 
On behalf of our senior pastor, please remain standing so we can see the entire outfit. Thank you. <laughs> On behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Dolphus C. Lacey and the disciples of the Bethany Baptist Church of Brooklyn, we warmly welcome you to the Bethany Experience. And those of you that are watching us via live stream, it is our sincere hope and prayer that you will leave this worship experience with the confidence that he lives today. And because he lives, you can live. At this time, the Bethany family will stand with you and welcome you all because it's fellowship time here at Bethany.
you're shaking a hand, that means you have a hand to shake, amen? That means you have a smile to smile. You got teeth in your mouth, got eyes to see. And if, even if you can't see, you can feel. You can feel the presence and the power of God. This morning, as we sing a couple of hymns that are near and dear to our hearts, if it reminds you of something, if you want to sing along, please join in with us.
Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will God till the day is done. There's not a friend. Did you there's not a friend? There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, <laughs> not one. You don't mind standing for the reading of our scripture. It's in your bulletin from the New International Version. <clears throat> and it reads, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all the things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Lord, we know you know all about our struggles. We thank you for guiding till the day is done. And we gather here to recognize that there's not a friend like you. We thank you for being our friend. We thank you for drawing us near to you. We thankful for when we are faithless, you are faithful. So faithful to your word, you meet us in this place. And as we come to the foolishness of preaching, hide me behind your cross, that all of you and none of me may be seen and heard. In the marvelous name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. A Sunday school teacher asked the children just before she dismissed them to go to church. And why is it necessary to be quiet in church, she asked. One of her students replied, because people are sleeping. 
two boys were walking home from church. After hearing a strong preaching on the devil, one said to the other, what do you think about all that Satan stuff? The other boy said, well, you know how Santa Claus turned out. It's probably your dad. <laughs> Today is April Fool's Day. And I, it, it is just so appropriate when Resurrection Sunday is on April Fool's Day. Because that's when God played the cruelest joke on humanity and on the devil. Because you thought he was dead, but Bazinga, he got up. <laughs> and we certainly celebrate that. So I'll say to you, happy Resurrection Day. Amen. In his book, Good Leaders Ask Great Questions, James Maxwell writes, if you want to be successful and reach your leadership potential, you need to embrace asking questions as a lifestyle. When we feel confused, we ask questions. When we feel beat down, we ask questions. Questions are keys that unlock and open the doors that otherwise would remain closed. Questions have power. Knowing the answers will help you in school, but knowing how to question will help you in life. James Baldwin said, the purpose of art is to lay bare the questions which have been hidden by the answers. Voltaire said, judge a man by his questions rather than his answers. What questions are you asking? Martin Luther King Jr. said, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Marvin Gaye said, what's going on? Jesus asked, who do you say I am? What, what do your questions reveal about you? Asking the wrong questions is a sure way to get a mis misleading answer that result in short-term remedies for symptoms instead of cures for long-term problems. On last Sunday, Palm Sunday, we explored the question of anguish. My God. My God, why have you forsaken me? We learn that when we feel abandoned, that it's okay to cry. That, 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 that's, what, that's what we learned. It was, it's okay to cry. If, if you come into church and you're concerned about your image, if you're concerned about your mascara, you will never be moved by God. But the moment you recognize that you can cry anywhere and anytime, watch God move in your life. And what we learned that when we cry out, we cry out personally. Along this journey, it's a lot for us to hide behind other people. But along our journey, we got to stand by ourselves and cry for ourselves. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the brother, not my sister, not my mother, not my father, not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me. That's what we learn. Again, because we, we always taught to be selfless, but there comes a time when we need to be selfish. And when you are facing an agonizing situation, you don't need to have, you know, when, when I know when, when moments get dark, we say, we, we text people, I need prayers, and we call people, I need, no, when you get to the real anguish, you ain't got time to call nobody. All you want to do is call on the Lord for yourself. Jesus said, my God. Why have you forsaken me? But also, we cry out passionately. Again, when you cry, you don't want to let them little cry. I'm glad Tori's here. Tori can teach us how to cry. I love babies. Babies don't care where you are in the worship service, what's supposed to happen and how they feel. When a baby want to cry, they cry with passion. Babies don't halfway cry. You, you trying to be cool when you crying out. You, you better be ugly as you want to be. <laughs> And let it out with all the passion. That's what Jesus said. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And lastly, we cry out promotionally. And the point that the promotional is about, that there is more to come. And the sad part about Christians, Christians always want a happy ending. 
That's what's wrong with Christians. Christians always want a happy ending. So we only want to celebrate God when the story comes out the way we want it to come out, which makes us look like superheroes. I know I'm talking about it. And so what Jesus did when he cried out, he was talking about what is to come, that even in the pain, God is still in charge. And because many of us think we got to protect God. Do you know even when we pray for healing and people die, God is still God? Do you know that when we pray for people to have a job and they still unemployed, God is still God? When we pray for God to take the pain away and the pain remains, God is still God. So we still ought to yell out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because there is more to come and it's not in my hands. And this morning, we conclude our sermon series of questions that we started last year. <laughs> the longest sermon series I ever preached. Why look for the living among the dead? What a powerful question. Why look for the living among the dead? Dead, uh, deprived of life lacking power or effect, unresponsive, dead. Why seek the living among the dead? Dead marked by inactivity. When, when something's dead, it doesn't move. That's why I just say amen every time, just to let people know I'm alive. Somebody ought to say amen. We're going to call the paramedics on you because you're pretty quiet up in here. You're inactive. And my Bible tells me anything that's dead ought to be buried. So, so, so dead is marked by inactivity, no, no movement. But also dead is marked by a stench. You can tell when something's dead because it just don't smell right. Am I right about it? When I think about that, you can think about that gross smell that you come across. And, and again, there's no life in that. It, 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 it's just dead and, and it begins to stink. It, it insults your nostril. Can't nobody, I mean, you, you go across and you see some mangy animal that begins to stink. Ain't no, you could care what anybody say. You know that animal is dead because it smells dead. You know, you can walk in some churches. Not this church. Not y'all. But there, there are some churches in the neighborhood that are just reek of death. Dead is marked by inactivity, by a stench, but also dead is marked by decay. When something is dead, it begins to fall apart, can't hold itself together, begins to dissolve. And just think about this, in your situation, where, wherever you are, why would you go looking for some life with something that is inactive, something that stinks, and something that is decaying? That's what a body does. When you put a body in a tomb, it is inactive. It's not moving anymore. When you put a body in a grave, it begins to stink. When you put a body in the grave, it begins to decay. Why would you go to a graveyard looking for life? Have you ever been around something dead? Maybe your loved one, maybe roadkill, but in that situation, we don't go there looking for life. As we look at our story, it's very interesting, and I, I, I typically like the new revised, I mean the NIV, the new international version, um, but for today's message, I actually prefer the new revised standard version. It's called the NRSV or the RSV. That is my study Bible. It's, it's the most technical of the Bibles, and, and oftentimes I don't like to use it because things that we love to quote and say, it, it takes the stuff away because there's a lot of glosses, but, but what I love in here is just a simple a simple word that takes place which is really different from the NIV versus the NRSV and it's the first word they add a word it's because they add a wa it's a wa consecutive in, in, in Greek it, it says but on the first day 
Oh, y'all missed it. You missed it. I, I wish I had a board because the NIV just tells us uh, on the first day of the week at, at early dawn. It, it just begins to just pick that story up with chapter 24. But, but I love the New Revised Standard Version by adding, but it connects to what went before. See, y'all missed what I'm trying to let us see. See, see you got to recognize that we talked about Calvary on last week. Last, last week he died. He died. Surely he died on Calvary. Calvary. And watch this. And then there was a good man by the name of Joseph of Arimathea who went to Pilate and asked, can I get the body of Jesus and lay him in a tomb? And Luke chapter 23 tells us, and the women, say with me, the women, the women who followed him from Galilee, say with me again, the women, the women who followed him from Galilee, say with me one more time, the women. The women who followed him from Galilee also were at the cross. And then, watch this, the text tells us, they did, because it was ready for the Sabbath, they prepared spices for his body and went home because it was the Sabbath. So they prepared, they prepared the spices to be able to anoint his body, but they ran out of time. So they went home. That, that's what Luke is telling us. He died and the women were prepared to, 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 um, to anoint his body, but they ran out of time. So then when we open up our text, it says, but <laughs> on the first day of the week, Earlier, did you see what now, that's the point I want us to understand? You know, but is a theological word, and oftentimes because we like to see people where they are. But I'm sorry, beloved, for you to really understand the work of God, you got to see their butt. <laughs> did you hear what I said? You like me now, but you got to see my butt. You got to see, I was messed up, but the Lord made a way anyway. Did, did you hear what I said? Does anybody have a butt in here? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who seek him. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give shall be an ever-flowing stream. But, but God commends his love for us in that while we are yet sinners... Christ died for us. But God, who is rich in mercy, full of great love, he loved us. Here, we see this powerful but, that in the midst of their sadness, but the, on the first day of the week, early at dawn, and I'll tell you what, and people sit back, because I got to correct people. I, I, I got one visitor, and I'm certainly glad you're here, and there are others that are here. But I love when we're here because I can just be honest. And so when Pastor Lacey is talking about one service, if I were to have one service, do you know what service I would have? It would be the 745. Did you hear what I said? been around long enough that 745 is too early in the morning to come play in church. 745 is too early in the morning to be concerned about what people got on. 745 is too, too early in the morning to be concerned about issues. And I love that whenever God does something powerful, he does it early in the morning. Did you hear what I said? Early in the morning. Can't see it in the morning. Early in the morning. It's like they just couldn't wait for Jesus. They couldn't wait to go to the grave. Early in the morning, they came to the tomb, taking spices that they had prepared. Hmm. There are three things I wish to share with you on this resurrection day that I think this question evokes in us. And then we're on our way to celebrate resurrection the best way we can. Why do you look for the living among the dead. Well, this question summons three responses from these women, these powerful women. We are compelled on this day to remember their wonder. These were wonder women <laughs> from Wakanda. <laughs> remember 
their wonder. And Luke doesn't tell us, but actually John, John begins to say so, and so does Mark, is that when the women went while it was dark early in the morning, they were asking themselves, who will roll the stone away? That, 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 was, what, that was what was on their mind. That was on their mind. They, they, they were wondering who was going to roll the stone away. That, that was what consumed them because you, you, you are aware that the reason why this text exists because Jesus said he was going to get up. So therefore, they, they believed that perhaps there was a hoax. Perhaps he just was in a coma and he woke back up. Perhaps the disciples stole his body. That, that, that's the notion. But what, let me be very, very clear. Matthew tells us that he is placed in a borrowed tomb and then a stone is rolled over, and then it has the seal of Caesar on it, and then it has two guards guarding it. Okay? That, 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 that's it. So when they're going, they're, uh, their only concern is who going to roll the stone away? Let me help you. Let me, let, me, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me set straight any kind of foolishness that you might have ever heard. These women didn't go to the graveyard expecting a miracle. Okay, they went to finish a job that they started two days ago. That's the point. In their own mind, they, they gave up. They, they didn't expect to see the Savior. They went to go anoint a dead body, and all they were concerned about is who's going to roll the stone away. And when they got there and the stone was rolled away, they wondered who rolled the stone away. Mm. You know, beloved, sometimes we find ourselves in dead situations is because we're asking the wrong questions. Isn't it amazing when we find and you, you, you watch this, this nightmare, this national nightmare that we are experiencing from the press secretary. <laughs> oh, she's a woman, but y'all know, you tell the truth. Tell the truth, ain't she, Right? Why, why? Come on now. Why y'all come? Come on now. Y'all know she is. And you see people that got a chance to ask a question. And they ask the wrong question. That's it. Have, have you been in a meeting? You sit through the meeting all the time. They never called upon you. But the one that they called upon asked the wrong question. And I know there are teachers here. There are a whole lot of teachers, retired teachers and current teachers. And you always say, there's never a wrong question, just a question you didn't ask. No, there are wrong questions. <laughs> Let's be very, very clear about that. Some questions are out of bounds. Some questions are inappropriate. And some questions are not germane to the subject that we are engaged in. And here they are wondering, wondering, what's this? Can you imagine? Here you are ready to anoint a body. And you wonder who rolled the tomb away. Here, here they are. They're wondering. And not only did they be wondering, but their wondering led to another wonderment. They said to themselves, they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but, but when they went in, they did not found a body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men dazzling in clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed down their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you seek the living from the dead. Uh, he is not here. <laughs> and, and, and beloved, that's, that's what we come to remind ourselves of. Let, let, see, the issue that, the, the problem with the resurrection, and there is a problem with the resurrection, because we believe that all situations can be restored. Yeah, I'm helping somebody right now. Because somebody's in a bad relationship and they really holding out all hope. No, that's a dead relationship and it's sucking the life out of you. Can I get a witness? So, 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 thank you. I got to, I, I, I'll testify. So, so, all, all employment is not good. That job is sucking the life out of you. You, you hear what I'm saying? And you're just hoping that it's going to turn around. Every place that you live, every house is not a home. The place that you're living in, it keeps breaking down, sucking the life out of you. But you just keep on hoping that if I fix it this time, it won't break down. No. See, here they are. They're going to this death. They have embraced the reality of death. And beloved, you can never have a resurrection until you embrace the reality of a true death. They did not have any hope, any expectation that God would get up. They came to a dead situation. And what we recognize in dead in situations is that you cannot have progress without change. 
You cannot have progress without any change. And they show up here. And these men that they're called, but actually they're angels. They're not gods. And they ask this perplexing question. Why do you seek the living among the dead? I ask you this morning, what dead situations are you around? I'm telling you, beloved, that's the real thing. And what I recognize, my job best as pastor is managing relationships and teaching you how to manage relationships. And what happens is when we begin to misconstrue what is life when actually it is death, it, either, it ends up causing us our own very lives. So I ask you again, think about it. You are hanging around toxic people just to keep up a front. You can't stand them, they can't stand you, but yet y'all always together. I know she's your sister, but you still can't stand her. Yeah, I know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, family can be the meanest and the cruelest in the world. And we just, for the sake of mother, we just go on through. And I know a whole, of y'all, a whole lot of y'all got a Don Corleone, Don Corleone in y'all. Can't wait till mama die, huh? <laughs> that's Godfather too. y'all check that out. That's, that's, that's homework, just in case you missed it. Huh? It's over y'all head. What he talking about, Godfather too? Remember their wonder. But secondly... Because their wonder was wrong. And that's what we have to embrace that, beloved, we have been wrong and we can be wrong. But secondly, remember his words. <laughs> that, 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 that's the hope in the text. The angels, the, the, the men said, why seek the living from the dead? He is not here, but as risen. Then they said, remember what he said. And, and, and Matthew's version says, why seek ye to live in among the dead? He's not here. He's risen like he said. In, in other words, remember what God said. God has spoken word. God been telling them for over and over and over in the person of Jesus Christ that when they kill me, I will die, but I will get back up on the third day. He's he been saying it over and over again. This is not the first time that they heard it. H- have, you ever, have you ever been somewhere? And you've been telling your kids something over and over and over again. I know I got some parents and grandparents. I got some kids here that mama and daddy been telling you the same lesson over and over again. And then they go to church with you one day and Pastor Lacey say something. And they say, mama, you can't believe what Pastor Lacey said. He is so wise. <laughs> like, I've been saying this to you all your life. You don't pay no attention to me, but Pastor Lacey said, and now it's, it's from the mouth of God. <laughs> it is easy to forget when you are up close. Yeah, we take, we take for granted. Do you know that's what happens when you cannot see growth in your child until they go away to college? Till they come back home? Till you go away from a week and then you come back and you say, you send them away from the summertime, then they come back all filled out and all tall and stuff? You're like, what the world? But that was going on before your very eyes, but you couldn't see it. Here they were with Jesus. I told you, the text tells us these women came from Galilee. They just wasn't just hanging around. Luke also tells us that these women financed Jesus' ministry. Yeah, read your Bible. Yeah, they financed Jesus' ministry. So here these same women, they didn't heard Jesus say this over and over. The angel couldn't say remember unless they already heard. Remember what he said. What we're called to do, what, what, what this question, why seek the living among the dead, is when you find yourself in a dead situation, you got to remember, what did God speak to you? I dare say oftentimes when we find ourselves in a graveyard situation, we're there typically because of our own disobedience. we there because we wanted to go there. But if we would pause and reflect, we can remember God telling us, don't go down there. Don't buy that house. Don't take that job. Don't marry him. Don't ma- can- Am I meddling with somebody? I know God speaks to you. You you pray to him. It's amazing. And we forget to God that we pray. Somebody the other day was coming to me for counseling. And uh, and yeah, they're here and they're here in this service right now. And they, they came to me for counseling. And they came to me for counseling because they were looking for a job. And they prayed and prayed for the job. And then they came to me afterwards and said, Pastor, I got the job. I said, well, hallelujah. About six months later, she said, Pastor, pray for me. I said, what's wrong? I don't like the job. Well, I said, are you sure, God, that's the job that God wanted you to have? 
We quit. You know, God's the one paying attention. God, like, didn't you just ask me for this job? Didn't you just ask me for this house? Didn't you just tell me if I just, I mean, come on somebody, we get up here and we love the praise and shout. If he don't do another thing, he been good. What if God remind you of what you said? Huh? He, he, he knows that. You know, the new, the, the new language now is receipts. People talk all that stuff, but you want them to show you some receipts, show you some proof. What if you get to heaven and God asks you for some receipts? What kind of receipts can you show that you've been listening to God? What kind of receipts can you show that you've been led by God? What kind of receipts can you show that your ministry, your lifestyle, your living has been blessed by God? Here, what we're told to do is remember his words. God has been speaking to you. And the good news, God just doesn't speak at 745 when the pastor is speaking. God speaks to you in your own conscience. God speaks to you in your own circumstances. God speaks to you in your own Bible study and your own devotions. God speaks to you when you are engaged in your own prayer life. And what God is telling us when we come in to a dead-end situation where we see our hope, our promise, our possibility dead, God is saying, remember what I told you that I have the final word. God says, remember, remember when you are in a difficult situation that my God shall supply all of your needs according to your riches and glory. Remember when you are in a dark situation that, that you cannot fail because now unto him who is able to keep me from falling and present me faultless before his glory with exceeding great joy. When you look like you are down and out, remember God told you that the fix is in because all things work together for good to them that love God that are called according to his excellent purpose yes, yes. remember the word yes. remember God's word to you yes. and that's the point that's the importance of devotion yes. because if you can't remember a word that implies that God has never spoken a word over your life yes. think about that yes. remember their wonder uh, they were asking the wrong questions remember his words his words pointed them not to the future, it pointed them to the past and the future by reminding what he did say because it points to their future. So lastly, remember their witness. Wow. Remember their witness. I love this text. It says, he is not here but has risen. Verse 6, remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Text says, verse 8, then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all of this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. Remember their witness. And the text says in verse 8, Then they remembered his words. And to remember actually means to combine, to come back. To recall, to be reconnected. Because it's always in there. And what this text reminds us on this day is that every time you hear the word of God, it ought to reset you for you to remember who you are. See, all of us got little gadgets, and we got televisions, and we got computers, and, and we got iPhones, and Galaxies, and C phones, and all those kind of things. Yeah. Somebody said, what's a C phone? I just invented it that. Don't want to let you know. So, so <laughs> we got all types of phones, all type of electronic processes. We got a nice sound system. And guess what? When all else fails, you know what we do? We reset it by turning it off. Turn it back on again. And just think about it. You don't call some expert in, 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 in India. You know, that's where they are right now. You, you, <laughs> when, you, when you call on the phone, you call it in India. That's some call center. And they're telling you all of this stuff. 
And you got to, when, when all else fails, they tell you, unplug it, wait 15 or 30 seconds, then plug it back in. Because it has a way of resetting it. And beloved, I want to let you know, I, I believe that's why we come to church. Because in life, we can get clogged and we can get bugs in us. And, and when we come in and engage in the Word of God, it has a way of turning us off and turning us back on so that we might be able to be reset. Did you hear what I'm saying? I know I came in here broken, but when I leave, I leave lifted up. I, I come in to be reset. I, I come in so I can be set the way God has set me. The text says that when they spoke the Word, then they remember. But, but watch this, beloved. Once they remember, they didn't keep it to themselves I want you to pay clear attention they did not say in this text go tell the disciples the women decided to go on their own did you hear what I said I told you these same women that followed Jesus these same women that were at the cross these same women that go without any guard in the middle of the night to a dead cemetery many of us don't go to the cemetery in the daytime by ourselves but here they are in the middle of the night being able to anoint their savior and they see an angels and the angels tell them he is not here but he risen like he said remember what he told you they said when they remembered they went and told the 11 and the others and, and beloved after you have been reset after you have heard the gospel after you have been recharged after you have been renewed it is a crying shame for you to keep it for yourself you gotta go and tell somebody about the goodness of God tell somebody about the love of God we done grew up in this area where snitches get stitches. So we afraid to tell people about Jesus. We, we afraid to tell people what makes me. We afraid to tell me what floats my boat. What is the air beneath my wings? We, we are afraid to talk about Jesus. But, but, but the thing that I learned when I used to hang out with my cousins, I had a cousin of mine. Can't tell her name because they might be watching. It's one of them. They'll know. But I had a cousin. And she was a tattletale. I know some of y'all look like tattletales. Just that you know a tattletale? What's a tattletale is somebody that just can't go run and tell it. Soon as they learn something, they say, ooh, I'm telling. See, see they're not a snitch. A tattletale will let you know. Mama didn't like that. Ooh, I'm going to tell. Did you hear what I said? Soon as you mess up, soon as you broke the television, ooh, I'm going to tell mama that. And I wish the good, that, I wish the God that we would have that kind of spirit, that tattletale spirit to see when God does something powerful. Ooh, God, I can't wait to tell my brother. My brother needs to know that you are a weight maker. Ooh, God, I can't wait to tell my sister. My sister knows needs to know that you are a healer. Ooh, God, I need to tell you. About, I need to tell my mother about you because my mother needs to know that you are the lover of her soul. Ooh, God, I'm going to tell my daddy on you. My daddy needs to know that you are the glory and the lifter of his head. Is there anybody here that want to run and tell about the goodness of God? How God can make a way out of no way. How God can make a way anyway. Is there anybody here who has experienced the love and the power of God? If you can't tell it uh, let me tell it he brought me uh, from a mighty 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 long way the power of the resurrection Sunday is for us to be able to claim this particular truth he is not here but risen like he said and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And that's how we go forward. Can I deputize you? Can I remind you that you are God's witnesses? Right now, God has, the sun does his job. Sun shows in majesty. The mountain does her job. Mountain is strong and powerful. The rain comes down. All of those things testify to God. Even a beautiful gazelle and giraffes and elephants. But what about God's prized creation? Sons, daughters. Can you go witness? Here we are on Resurrection Sunday. I dare you to be a witness to somebody. This is the word of God. And if by chance you never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, 
This is the moment of decision where you can surrender your life to Christ. You can come by letter, Christian experience, or as a candidate for baptism. But all means, will you please come? God sent his son. He came to live. He came to love. Heal and forgive. To buy my part. My Savior. Will you come? Because he lives. I can face. Because he lives. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Will you reach across the aisles, touch the hand of your neighbor? Let us pray. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, even the earth received her frame. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Through endless ages, you remain the same. We thank you, O oh God, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have experienced. We thank you for Calvary. But we thank you for the tomb. We thank you that you defeat death and the grave. So God, as we face dead-end situations, in relationships, in employment, in finances, in our health, we turn them over to you and remember what you have spoken unto us. That he who began a good work in us is able to complete it. We claim the promise that we are your sons and daughters. We claim the promise that we're blessed in the city and blessed in the field. We claim every promise that you have spoken over us. And we know that heaven and earth will pass away before your word returns to you void. So in the meantime, give us courage to trust you. Give us courage to keep coming back and being reset every time we hear the story that you got up from the grave. And because you got up, we can live and face tomorrow. Forgive us of our sins, of commission and omission. Forgive us for being out of position. Forgive us of our lack of knowledge, our lack of trust, our lack of faith. We ask that you would heal us. Heal our broken bodies. Heal our wounded spirits. Heal our sick and frailing bodies. We pray for those in our sick and shut-in list. Those that are known and those that are unknown. We, those we pray that you would be able to meet them. I know there are those who would love to be here. Even on this day, send your spirit. Indeed, commission us to go visit somebody today. To let them feel the love of you that we have experienced. Then bless this church. The place that you have called us to be. This Bethany experience. To continue to be a vibrant and relevant expression of your son. To Brooklyn to New York, to even this United States of America. Allow this world to be a better place 
because we exist. Allow us to live up to what does it mean to be a Bethany, to be a healing station, to be a place for those who face challenges to be able to grow and develop. And we'll be careful, oh God, to give your name, the glory, the honor, and the praise, not only now, but in a world that has no end. In the marvelous name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. church say amen oh come on say it like you mean it amen amen with your outside voice we reach a moment in our worship experience where we can participate via the giving and receiving of tithes and offering uh, this is the only means by which god has ordained us to take care of god's church the scriptures declare that on the first day of the week let a man and woman purpose in our heart what we should give. So again, giving is a heart decision. It's not a wallet decision. Purpose in our heart what we should give. We should not give begrudgingly or of necessity. Please tell me why. Will all the cheerful givers please stand and follow the direction of our ushering ministry.
We thank thee, God, for an opportunity to give unto you a portion you have given us. Bless these gifts that they might be used for the upward building of your kingdom. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, both now and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated in, the pres seated in the presence of the Lord. We certainly ask that we would keep Sister Harriet Kennebrew in our prayers and our family and the loss of her brother, Mr. Solomon Holland, and also all those on our sick and our shut-in list. Thank you all who participated in our Holy Week worship services on Wednesday and our silent communion and on our Good Friday worship experience. Again, to God be the glory to what God is doing. I mean, better, 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 better. Great. I mean, our best, our best days are ahead of us, and we certainly celebrate that. But in, in order to do that, we must always push the envelope and push ourselves further. And our desire is to live up to our rep. Our job is to live up to our rep. Uh, I'm a Morehouse man, and what, what they tell us, what Howard Thurman tells us, that Benjamin, My, Benjamin Elijah Mays quote and says, Above every Morehouse man is a crown that he has to grow into. It's growth. And there's a crown that God has placed above us that we have to grow into. And to whom much is given and expected. You know what I'm saying? So I want you to know Brooklyn expects a lot from us. So we're leading on Wednesday. On Wednesday, April the 4th, we'll have our MLK 50, 50th celebration. But we're going to celebrate the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, I believe that our celebration will only be rivaled by Memphis, Atlanta, and Washington, D.C. There will not be a better celebration than what we're having. Why? Because that's our vision. Act the way you want to be, and after a while, you'll be the way you act. You act the way you want to be, and after a while, you'll be the way you act. So you act great, and you'll be great. Did you hear what I said? That's what happens. It, I, I, I didn't. I, I get. I used to have one suit. Now I got twelve. Watch. Act the way you want to be. <laughs> and after a while, you'll be the way you act. Cause I wore that black suit like it was another one, but I wore it <laughs> till I couldn't wear it no more. It told me, please don't put me on again. <laughs> but, but seriously, it is our desire. We want to be able to have overflow. It is our expectation that people do not come here will miss out on something. That, that's, that's what we're trying to be able to do. We're really trying to do that, but I can't do it if you are not here. All of, your pastor has spoke to pastors all across this city, all across Brooklyn. And if you go to church and you call your sister, or your cousin, your friend, you're going to hear their pastor making the same announcement. And who asked your, their pastor to make that announcement? Your pastor. But I can't lead if you're not going to be with me. Y'all hear what I just said? I can't lead. I can't lead if you won't be with me. It's going to be a great, it's going to be a great celebration. We got over 50 churches that are committed to coming. Now, it's sad if all we got churches in name and it looked like 8 o'clock. Uh-uh. No. Nah. And, it, 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 and looking like Good Friday ain't even big enough. We need to put chairs in the aisle and we want the fire marshal to come and shut us down and say nobody else can come in. No, see, y'all, 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 see, y'all don't have expectations like that. That's how I dream. And when I dream, I dream in color. <laughs> some of y'all, some of y'all don't know about that. You guys see, I grew up, I get around. <laughs> You're going to learn today, I dream in color. And I can envision that because our community needs it. Our community, we got two dynamic speakers that are coming here. Linda Sassor and Raphael Warnock are par excellence. And guess what? One of them is speaking in Memphis. The other is speaking in Washington, D.C. They're leaving D.C. and leaving Memphis. Why? Because your pastor asked them to come. Now, they're not members here. And they're doing what your pastor... Y'all hear what I just said? Can I be your pastor? And your pastor needs you on April the 4th. Right? Look, that's just so quiet. I'm going to just start preaching again. Man, I need to put it in my sermon. Would you believe that on April the 4th, uh, 
2018 at 7 o'clock in the evening. We're going to be praising God uh, on the aisles, uh, in the balcony, uh, in the ra Is there anybody here who wants to praise the Lord? <laughs> I shouldn't have to do that. And guess what? I even got the joint board of ushers coming. Y'all know, if, if the ushers show up, it's serious. It's serious. They showing up from all, from Brooklyn and Long Island. I think I might even let them march. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I, I love April Fool's Day. And I love y'all. I love y'all. Too bad I got to do this again at 11. I want to go home. I, I had enough church today. But please, 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 please spread the word because I, I, I'm promising you that we're going to be moved. And again, we are claiming our rightful spot in leadership in this city. Let's do it together. Amen? Amen. Will you stand as we prepare to go down from this place? We live in troubled times. Seems like the sun won't shine. When will we realize God is on our side? He hides us in his arms, protecting us from harm. It's good to realize. Is on our side. Nothing can separate. He gives us strength to take. All that this world may bring, God is on our side. And for those who are participating in our community choir, this wonderful music ministry and maybe you don't have the gifts to commit to it for a whole season you can be a part of the community mass choir and all you got to do is come to two rehearsals tomorrow night at seven tuesday night at seven and then you guess what you got a reserved seat now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly, above and beyond what we can think, say, ask, or imagine. To him be majesty, power, and glory, both now and forevermore. you go in peace.